<laughs> Welcome back to Bajulai. Last time we spoke about auto hegemony, what that meant, how we felt to be able to wield power from within, and how important it is to be able to do so. We better understood the ability to understand oneself and the power that lies within that. Today we're going to go a little deeper into the opposite philosophy, counter-hegemony. If auto-hegemony is the ability to will power from within, then counter-hegemony is the ability to will power from a counter-external force. It is the ability to be given the realization that you have more power than you actually realize from particular circumstances that occur in your reality. If auto-hegemony is the deeper understanding of oneself, counter-hegemony is the understanding of how you can react to particular situations and how you can overcome particular situations. No matter how dire they may become, how adverse it is, you can find power to overcome anything. So, one of the most important deities that has been conjured for this particular will is Shungo. Shungo has been an important deity that allows one to understand what counter-hegemonic spirit can be conjured up for whatever circumstances that one may find themselves in. And through our history, we as black people have found ourselves in very, very difficult, very hostile, very traumatizing situations. And the will within us, as well as the will that has been forced from the experiences that we have, has allowed us to overcome certain ordeals. Today we're going to go a little deeper into how that actually works. How Shungo, the Yoruba deity, the Yoruba Odisha, has actually been integral part of this particular counter-hegemonic spirit. Shungo visual objects equally evoke the mystery, anger and impatience of the virulent divinity. Of the various images explored by African-American artists, Shungo iconography was one of the most frequently employed in the 60s and early 70s. African-American artists such as Ademola, Oluge Befola, Jeff Donaldson and David Driscoll explored the Shungo myth, celebrating and invoking the Yoruba divinity using an array of painterly approaches. They reconstructed the ancient Shungo iconography in a North American context by devising and improvising on images and visions suitable to their thematic interests, material limitations, technical competence, stylistic preferences, and personal apprehensions and structural and imposing reality. They expanded on the indigenous Yoruba context from which the motifs have been adapted, creating new etheric and thought-provoking imagery, bringing new forms of celebratory appreciation and invocations, which reflected the individualistic, independent and dynamic spirits of the artist. The signification of this painter varied as they created their own arrangements all while still retaining the spirituality condensed within the Yoruba myths. The creations that stem from this spirituality with its psychological metamorphosis and intellectual nurturing collided with a pluralistic temper garnered from the everyday interaction and experience of the African-American artists leading to an assimilation and articulation of the Yoruba Shango myth. Firstly, we must address who is Shungo? Shungo Olukoso, also known as Afonja, a Willere, a deified ancient ruler of the Oyo Kingdom, is one of the principal divinities of the Yoruba people. He was so spiritually powerful in his lifetime that he was deified after his death. 
becoming the divinity in command of lightning and thunder, supplanting Jakuta, who was his predecessor. Associated with clandestine plots, military action and reaction. This is who Shongo was, a militant leader, a militant king, an extremely powerful one, to the point that his myths stemmed through the Yoruba world as a king who cannot hang. Olukoso, the king who did not hang, and who cannot hang, who cannot die, whose willpower lives forever. How does Shungo images function in Yoruba land? The features of Yoruba iconographic influences on African American artists in the 20th century culture of the black artists in the United States created a crucial algebra. An algebra employed for remembering the essential cultural spirits of the two continents that have drifted away from one another. Understanding this connection grants us a greater lens to the intricate connection birthed from the visual metaphors in the survival of African Americans during slavery and the recuperation during the 20th century. As Paul Gilroy stated, artistic expression becomes the means towards both individual self-fashioning and communal liberation. Poesis and poetics begin to coexist in novel forms, autobiographical writings, special and uniquely creative ways of manipulating spoken language and above all music. As I stated from the beginning in our last video, we spoke about auto hegemony as a theoretical and spiritual concept. Though we try to define it, it is imperative to note that the Yoruba ideas informing auto hegemony are too multivalent to fit within the binary formats of most Western theories. Olabi Yai the Yoruba literary scholar has noted that even deconstruction theory, that is, to deconstruct and to wither away, to thin a particular dense theory, an idiom often praised as the most advanced mode of criticism, lacks the vocabulary to account for Yoruba attitudes towards representation, since it's the centering concept presupposes a center in the first place. All assumptions regarding the analytical relevance of margins and centers, such manichaeism is eschewed in Yoruba cosmology in which the concept of bipolarity is always mediated by a third factor as in the Yoruba saying, Agbagba Meiji, Lomo Idieta, this translates as two elders know the meaning of three, but the application is that two implies three or in two is contained the third. The factor speaks on the unknown, not just the three, but an entity beyond our measure. The fact of fate, the unpredictable X. This unpredictability is the nuanced energy that is the center, the core of the counter hegemonic energy. We are not always privy to what society has ready for us, to what history has written about us, to what people may feel about us, to what violence be inflicted physically, spiritually, mentally, psychologically. We may not be privy completely to all these particular forces. However, through history, we have been able to counter it, whether by force or whether by the inability to not ignore them. This particular energy and this particular ability to counter it, as we see, has been channeled through 
Shango Olukoso. Through this particular deity, whose militancy has allowed us to become brave, to will the bravery that was already in us. In the next video, I'm going to speak a lot deeper about particular art created by this artist mentioned. I'm going to go deeper into particular movements, especially the Chicago Renaissance, which historically channeled such energy. Going deeper into Ademola, Oluge Befola, Jeff Donaldson, and David Driscoll, amongst many other artists which were part of the Afrocobra movement, would allow us to see and to understand what counter hegemony really means and also the overlap between the auto hegemonic understanding intricately known by many of us coupled with the counter hegemonic energy that we all experience in our everyday life thank you for listening please like share and subscribe and i'll catch you into the next one